Hello and welcome to the next instalment of the Tecla Structural Designer Quick Start videos. Here we're looking at a multi-storey concrete frame model with a transfer deck and steel frame on top. We'll go straight ahead to running the design to give us some results to interrogate. With these results available we can go and look into the support reactions for each member as well as for the walls. At the top right of the results window we can also turn on the text for these reactions. If we head over to the left hand side of this tab we can scale up the results to make them more obvious. The wall reactions will initially appear as individual reactions at each mesh point. The mesh is typically at one meter spacings based on the default structure settings. The denser you make this mesh the longer the analysis time takes so I recommend staying with the default. If we go to the model tab and select core walls we can group these to allow us to view one reaction for the entire group of walls and or columns if you wish. Switch back to the results and switch the support reactions from 1D to core to view the combined results. For this core line, we can also interrogate the axial, shear and moment. We can do this for any other member as well, including deflections. For an isolated view of any of these, which are more related to a hand calculation, you can right click on a member and go to load analysis view to see the forces, shear, moment and deflection results for this member alone. You can also drag the red cursor or type in a distance in the properties window to see the results at any given point along the member as shown. As mentioned, we can also interrogate the deflections as we have done in previous quick start videos. Use the slider on the left hand side of the results ribbon to scale these deflections up and down to suit and to assist you in finding any excessive deflections, especially in busy models. Not only can we view deflections for beams, columns and such, but we can also view them for the slab. There are a few prerequisites to this. Firstly, the slab must be two-way spanning. Secondly, you must be in the FE chase down view to ensure the slab has been meshed and is not simply acting as a diaphragm. As well as slab deflections, we can interrogate the moment in the slab, the in-plane forces and the area of steel required. In our example, the additional reinforcement is required over the column tops and around the core walls. If we want to go a stage further, we can use the result strip for walls, this is a result line and must be in an elevation view to look at the equivalent load analysis view. This can be seen as an average over a specified width or as the maximum results seen over this width. The load analysis view for the strip shows you the contour of the FE mesh as if it were applied to a member. This works identically to the previous and so use the properties or the slider to see the values at a specific location. Again, you must be in the FE chase down view or have meshed the slab for all analysis types. This is mostly used for transfer slabs only though. In this view, we are looking at the pass fail status, however in more depth, by looking into the utilization ratios for each member. In simpler terms, how hard the member is working under the applied loads. I have adjusted my utilization ratio brackets through the home settings tab to more clearly identify the members which are failing marginally, as well as those which are on the upper end of their limit. In this section, we're going to use more of the review tab to interrogate what has been set in our structure and to check all is set as required. First, the auto check design view. As we've run a design already, the steel members have turned auto design off. This is done by default as engineers may wish to rationalize out the steel sections used and rerun the design to check that these still pass. Fixed pin view we have looked at previously, so we'll skip over this one. As well as this, we have our BIM status view. In here, once a new version of the model has been imported, we can see what has been updated, deleted and also remove members from the export process if needed. Next along we have the slab reinforcement view. By default the slabs have the minimum available reinforcement in them, H8 at 200. Back to our steel work and the section material grade view is where we can most easily rationalise the steel sections which have been selected. In our small steel frame only two sections are required. Change review to copy to select a section size you wish to copy. TSD then highlights available members which this can be copied onto. This command, as well as others, is repeated in the copy properties function. To show this, if we go into a member and edit the deflection limits to create an example, then head to the copy properties command, we can see that we can now apply these altered deflection limits onto other members rather than having to do this individually. We can also do this for web openings again by setting up one in the member properties dialog box. This can be done most easily by using the quick layout option and copying the opening across the member. Again, then select this member and copy the properties across all others that require the openings. Another useful tool in the review view is the substructures. This is predominantly used for both view creation and for filtering reports. 
enable the command and change review to new and type in a name if you wish. Then simply select the members you wish to be included in the group and escape the command. This creates a view of just those members. You can also filter some of the reports by substructure. One of the last visual review options is show alter state. In here, you can edit a great many more options such as gravity only, rotational stiffnesses, and cantilevering ends. For cantilevers, simply select the end which is to be free. Last on the ribbon is tabular data. All of this can be exported to Excel if you wish to do any post-processing as well. The most used view in here is the sway check view. Here you can see the alpha crit values which have been used. Here you can see the alpha crit values which have been used and get the full calculation breakdown. As well as this, there is a materials list, a connection resistance check. This one will check whether any of the standard green book connections are suitable for the members and forces acting on the members ends, as well as a few others. Where the alpha crit values in the sway check are coming back at less than 10, you may wish to consider second order effects during the design process. This is controlled through the design settings and by switching the analysis type accordingly. Please note that this is not suitable for values under 2. In the design settings as well, we can control what the ignorable forces are. These may otherwise flag up as warnings for minimal forces in the design process and reports. In the 2020 version, we have also included a basic fire check, which is explained in more detail in the release webinar.